Hey, hey, Mr. Heritam here. We're going to do a review of solution vocabulary for you. Okay. Remember, there are three types of mixtures. We have solutions, which are one phase. Remember, another word for solution is homogeneous mixture. These are uniform throughout. The particles are so small you can't see them. You cannot separate upon standing. You cannot filter them. And the Tyndall effect, remember, uh, scattering of light. So you cannot scatter light on a solution. Example would be salt water. Colloids. These are the heterogeneous mixtures that look homo. An example would be blood. Or milk. Or paint. They look homo, but really they're hetero the particles are a little bit bigger. These are not uniform. They do not separate on standing. They do not separate on filtering, but they do scatter light. And then finally, suspensions. These are the ones that are two phases. They are not uniform. The particles are really big, so gravity pulls them out. So thus way they separate on standing. They separate by filtration, and you can scatter light with them. An example would be silo dressing, or my favorite example is muddy water. Okay, this unit, we are focusing on the solutions, the homogeneous mixtures. It's very important that solutions are very small particles that are dissolved in their substance. Capable of being dissolved. This would be soluble. The dissolving medium in a solution. What's doing the dissolving, that would be the solvent. Remember, water is the universal polar solvent. Okay? The liquid is typically the solvent. The other substance that does gets dissolved is the solute. Usually this is a salt. And I misspelled solute. Awesome. Okay. So in salt water, what is the solute and what is the solvent? Well, salt is dissolving in the water, so that would be the solute. The solvent, and this is usually what you have more of, would be the water. Okay. There are many different types of solutions, all involving three phases. We can have gas and liquid. Our example would be soda. Okay. Gas and gas would be air. In soda, we have carbon dioxide in water. In air, we have nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, a bunch of stuff in there. Liquid and liquid. Um, let's go with antifreeze. Antifreeze is a mixture of ethylene glycol. This is one of those organic compounds. In water. Okay. Um, you have to be careful with ethylene glycol because that tastes sweet. And um, unfortunately, lots of pets have been killed drinking antifreeze, so you don't want to leave that out for your pet friends to drink. So, it's not good. Now, I wonder how they figured out how it was sweet, but whatever. Um, a solid and solid would be something like bronze or brass. I think bronze is a mixture of copper and zinc. Don't quote me on that one. Okay, another word for a solid in a solid, and I apologize because I'm pressing too hard on the table. 
would be an alloy. Okay. Does everything always dissolve in something else? The answer is no, not necessarily. Depends on if the substances are soluble or not. Depends on the polarity of the substances. So when a substance is not dissolved in a substance, this is what we call insoluble. This is the term that we use for a solid. When we're doing liquids, if they dissolve in each other, the term we use is miscible. Okay, if they do not dissolve in each other, like oil and water, these are immiscible. And we'll learn in the next section here, Hanneker is polar, and water is polar, so they mix together. Oil is nonpolar, and water is polar, so they do not mix together. And you'll see future videos on that. Immiscible liquids will not mix. Hmm, that's what immiscible means. But rather separating the layers, what determines which liquid will be on top of the entire liquid? That would be the L density, of course. The lower density would be on top. Hey, you guys are champions. The legend is out.